Hitting a target with a projectile is the single oldest skill known to man. Hunters dedicated their entire lives to perfecting their aim, their craft. But there was one massive problem. If your target moved, you missed. Surely there would never be a solution for this military conundrum. Enter the United States BGM-71 tow missile launcher capable of tracking a moving target thousands of meters away. There is a giant leap forward in a long line of attempts to solve this complicated issue. They were so coveted that they were involved in an international scandal called the Iran-Contra affair, where Iran agreed to exchange hostages with the United States in exchange for over 1,000 tow missile launchers. They were so effective they became a symbol of American firepower. You're ready to give missiles to the rebels there. I think uh, tow missiles, uh, I'm ready to look at arming them to help themselves. Opposition forces, some backed by the U.S., here seen with an advanced tow missile who are fighting against Syria's brutal dictator. Something's recently changed. Zero tow launchers were sent to Ukraine. Has it finally become obsolete? What are the pros and cons of this technology, and how did its invention change U.S. Army tactics and doctrine? Or should the U.S. military finally replace it with a longer-range laser-guided system? But first... But I want to give a big thank you to the sponsor of this video, Age of Origins. It's a completely free, amazing tower defense game. It came at the perfect time for me because I was just trying to find where I could find a low stress, fun game like this. Age of Origins is a hybrid zombie tower defense game where you've been given command of a city in a post-apocalyptic world ruled by zombies. My favorite part is the tower defense mini game that you can play. In it, you can use over the top towers like machine guns, rockets, lasers, EMPs. You can even treat some of the zombies and make them fight for you. I was able to recruit unique units that are specifically designed to fight off crazy zombies like mutant zombies, zombie bears, death mothers, gigantuum zombies, and much more. You can expand your city, research technology, and create diplomatic ties with other players. Just be careful in the world map. There could be enemy invasions and epic battles with hundreds of units at any moment. Please consider heading down to the special link in the description to receive an exclusive $60 gift and download Age of Origins. In order to understand the tow missile launcher, we need to first look at the development of its foundational technology. During World War II, the Germans began studying how to guide weapons with wires that were used to carry signals from a controller. After the war in the 1950s, Britain and France developed their own versions. The British called the Mallard car, but it fell short of expectations because it was too heavy to the point where it needed to be vehicle mounted, and it was pretty crappy accuracy with a terrible control system that needed a ton of training to become an expert on. At the time, the US military was using something called the SS-10. It was invented by the French Army. It had a max range of 1,600 meters, and it flew really slow at 80 meters per second. You could basically step away from the thing if you saw it coming. You gotta keep in mind that warfare at the time was radically changing. Light infantry were falling out of favor, they were no longer in fashion because tanks and armor were getting bigger and better at a rapid pace. They were becoming OP, overpowered. This in turn created a need for more lethal anti-armor weapons. The Soviet Union created the first man-portable anti-tank guided missile with the 9M14 Maluka. I think I'm saying that incorrectly. And it was a huge hit in 1963. They made over 25,000 of these. A lot of Soviet weapons made in the 1960s were on par or better than their Western counterparts parts, which is kind of the opposite of how it is today. It's crazy how things can flip in just a matter of a few decades. This put the West in a position where they were really in trouble at the time. In the United States, in the fall of 1958, research and development began on what was tentatively being called the Long Range Time Period Heavy Assault Weapon, or HAW. Really catchy stuff. The work would be done at the Ballistic Research Laboratories, which had been around since the 1930s and located at Aberdeen Proving Ground in Maryland. So David Haddison, the branch chief, was unhappy with all of the existing solutions at the time, so he ran some thought experiments in his mind. He tried to run up some, some ideas for concepts in his noodle. He envisioned a missile that would be launched from a tube and then optically tracked by a camera that would watch the IR flare on the back of the missile. Then it's guided by an electrical signal sent through the wire attached from the launcher computer to the missile. A programmer on the project named Harry Reid christened it the TOW as an abbreviation to all of that long explanation and the name stuck. But the missile was not without its fair share of initial problems. When the missile was fired, it caused the launch motor blast to break the rear seal. The overpressure from the gas also broke the front seal. The shock wave 
also caused important pieces to fail. The first explosion that propels the missile can't be so destructive that it damages all the important electronic components on the tow. They needed to change the design so that it couldn't be taken apart after leaving the factory. That had some downsides with testing, but it fixed all of the reliability issues. There are also a few combat limitations to using a wire-guided missile. So if you see an enemy, but they're located across a river, you might as well wave and say hi, because the tow will be useless if you fire it over a body of water. This is because the wire will short circuit if it goes over water. If you see a bad guy in some thick wooded area, you might as well be firing blanks at him or give him a nice salute. The tow missile would get tangled in thick vegetation, so you can't fire it through there either. No go. I am exaggerating a little bit here. There are circumstances that you can fire the tow over bodies of water. The general rule of thumb here seems to be that you should avoid trying to fire over a body of water that is longer than 1,100 meters or 3,600 feet long. So how exactly does this bit of military sorcery work? Explain like I'm an infantryman. Unlike a traditional rocket, the engines aren't mounted at the rear of the rocket, propelling it forward. That's not how it works. Instead, these rockets are placed on the sides to avoid burning the wire guidance system. Because remember, there's a wire that's out the tail of this missile, so you can't shoot rocket fuel back there. It would break the wire. There are three systems that keep the rocket flying straight. You got the dual engines, fins that pop out after firing, and the gyroscopes. The tow missile uses a strobe infrared light in the tail of the missile that can track the missile's flight path. The operator has a launch station where they can monitor the camera of the warhead. Having those missile instructions sent along the wire has the disadvantage of being limited by however long the wire is. But on the plus side, the signal can't be jammed. Here's how the tow had a massive impact on the infantry doctrine of the time. So they started mass producing in 1968. The tow was a massive change to US Army doctrine because it gave anti-tank abilities to vehicles that normally had no defense against armor. Back in the 90s, there was an entire military job called the 11 Hotel, which was dedicated to how to use the tow missile in offensive and defensive action. The whole idea was you could have a company of 16 Humvees, each one armed with the tow missile. They would be outnumbered and up against massive columns of armored tanks. They would harass and take out Soviet tanks. There are some setbacks to the tow, but the army didn't give up on making this system better. They invested in the tow improved target acquisition system, which is this fire control targeting system. The biggest changes here that were made were to increase the target acquisition capabilities and its engagement max range. The tow is a missile. Uh, we put it in an ITAS, which is an improved uh, target acquisition site. Put it in there, you aim the target, and it's pretty much arm it and then shoot it. It used a second generation infrared system and a laser rangefinder, so you could instantly get a readout on the distance of your crosshairs are to where you're aiming. It can cut through 31 inches of enemy armor, 800 millimeters, at a distance of 3,000 meters. It can launch three miles within a minute and a half and be guided the entire time. Over 500,000 tow missile launchers have been built, and it's been used in over 36 different countries around the world. Upgrades to the missiles continued as well, with a version in the late 1980s that was designed to defeat Russian reactive armor. Modern upgrades are impressive with one version, the BGM-71F. Designed to have this kind of quasi-top attack mode, current most up-to-date tow can be used in a fire-and-forget fashion, so it no longer requires the wire-guided feature as of 2006 when Raytheon created this wireless-guided version today. The Army still wants to replace it, though, with a more advanced system even yet. The Army just, it's never good enough for them. The other reason the tow missile might need a new upgrade is because modern missiles need to fly faster in order to evade active protection systems that exist today. These protection systems can shoot down projectiles in midair by tracking and firing at them. But how did it actually perform in combat? The tow missile launcher was first used in combat in Vietnam under the authority of the United States Army Aviation and Missiles Command. The North Vietnamese Army launched an assault against South Vietnam. The US military only had two Hueys that had tows mounted. Regardless, they were airlifted to Vietnam and went straight into combat. The crews who manned the two Hueys were still just test crews and actually hadn't fired a tow from a Huey yet. But the tows did not disappoint thanks to the stabilizers on the tow systems. Gunners found it extremely easy to keep their crosshairs laid on target while the pilots can maneuver the helicopter, meaning that the Hueys could function like a flying tank. Tow missiles were the primary weapon responsible for taking out Iraqi tanks and armored vehicles. There are accounts from the Gulf War veterans who claim to have witnessed the tow missiles accomplishing things that even engineers believed were impossible. One round was said to have gone straight through one T-72 and penetrated the tank behind it. Another tale recounts the time when a tow missile went straight through one six-foot dirt berm and destroyed the T-72 that was hiding behind the berm. That's incredible. 
The timeline to replace the tow with the new weapon is by 2028, according to reports from the US Army. The tow missile itself did get progressively better in order to evolve into the tow of today, with six new variants after that initial first one. Even if the Army does end up replacing it with a new missile, it will always be considered one of the most important stepping stones in the evolution of US-made missile technology.